We're talking to Dr. James Hefner, the president of Tennessee State University, and it is a summary of uh, his administration uh, at Tennessee State University and some of the things that were important in terms of his own uh, career. And Dr. Hefner, I think you were uh, talking about uh, the three individuals who played such a significant role in eventually convincing you that you ought to uh, move beyond and to uh, uh, be a candidate, for, perhaps, for one of these positions. Talk about those individuals for us. Well, Vivian Henderson uh, was an economist. Um, he was at uh, Fisk University, and he chaired the Department of Economics, uh, and then he went to Clark College as uh, president. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the one that uh, recruited me away from um, uh, the University of, of uh, Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, Boulder, when I finished up my um, uh, coursework for the degree. And as a result of him, I uh, did my dissertation dealing with black employment in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So it was Vivian who uh, molded me, who uh, brought me under his wing as president when he was president of uh, Clark College, and I was one of the faculty members. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I left uh, Clark College and did um, some work at uh, Princeton. And it was Vivian who convinced me to leave Princeton mm -hmm. to come back south. And he indicated that uh, you need to give back to the African American community. And so my wife, I moved my family uh, back to uh, Atlanta, and I worked with Vivian. And then the other person that came to my mind was, uh, was uh, Dr. Um, Hugh Gloucester of Mohouse College. Mm -hmm. Dr. Gloucester gave me a, a half million dollar chair. I was the first Charles A. Merrill Professor of Economics at Mohouse. I would have had this chair until I was 70 years of age. But my friends at Morehouse uh, encouraged me uh, to go upstairs, and even Dr. Gloucester encouraged that. So I ended up going to um, uh, Tuskegee Institute mm -hmm. as provost. So I left an endowed chair and went to Tuskegee as provost. And there's where I met Stephen Wright, mm -hmm. uh, who came in and was a consultant to me when I was a provost. Mm -hmm. And as a result of uh, those three men, the second year uh, that I was at um, uh, Tuskegee as provost, mm -hmm. they recommended, recommended me for presidency. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised by that, but they felt that I had the, the values, mm -hmm. the know-how, the skills to be a college president. And as a result of what those men did for me, mm -hmm. I ended up being a college president. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Dr. Hefner, uh, you talk about uh, your stay at uh, Tuskegee Institute. Yes. And I've had an opportunity to, uh, on this show, interview a large number of individuals from Alabama and from Tuskegee and et cetera. Uh, but I've never had an opportunity to have somebody to tell me personally, uh, what influence do you still find at uh, Tuskegee Institute uh, left by Mr. Booker T. Washington. Talk about Washington <laughs> and uh, Tuskegee and how you found uh, what is going on there and the influence that he had there. Well, I, I was always very interested in W.B. Du Bois, and, um, you know, and of course, I, I, I did go into Tuskegee with some prejudices mm -hmm. uh, regarding Booker T. Washington. And then I found that, really, uh, if you look at a corn, on one side you have a, a certain picture, on the other side you have the other. Uh, what they did for each other, they complemented each other, and one was the intellect and one was the pragmatist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I learned at Tuskegee is that the pragmatists uh, developed that institution and mm -hmm. created men and women who contributed much to the world. Now, Du Bois, uh, in my intellectual world, mm -hmm. is my champion, and so uh, Du Bois was the idealist. Um, of course, Booker T, the pragmatist. Mm -hmm. But you need in this world both pragmatists and idealists. Mm -hmm. and, and those two values have helped me in the presidency of Tennessee State University, as well as the presidency of Jackson State University. Mm -hmm. and, and so Washington's influence is still there. Washington's influence is still there, mm -hmm. and he believed in academic excellence. Mm -hmm. And that is what, of course, Du Bois believed in as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now, uh, when you reach Tennessee State University, you believe that uh, students matter most. Uh, talk about that from the perspective of why students ought to Well, matter. I think that uh, that is something that I learned at both Morehouse and at uh, Tuskegee, that students do matter most. And your job is to do an extraordinary job of educating them. Never believe that students cannot learn. Mm -hmm. Push them against intellectual walls and give them intellectual headaches. And that is what I learned when I was at the University of Colorado. That's what I did when I taught at Princeton. 
is that you don't assume that kids cannot learn. You mm -hmm. provide them with expectations mm -hmm. beyond what they think they can achieve, mm -hmm. and you'll find that many of them will do that. And, 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 and so that has been sort of a creed in terms of your academic career. That my, academic career my academic career has been around excellence. I mean, I do not, I do not uh, in any way say that I'm sorry that I believe in excellence. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, let, let's talk about uh, some of the, the accomplishments that uh, your administration was able to perform for Tennessee State University over the uh, many years. Well, I'm delighted to say that for the last 10 years, TSU has been listed in U.S. News and World Report as one of the 229 best colleges in the country. No other black college has been able to achieve that consistently. And that represents the excellence that uh, I was taught by those three presidents who felt that I was worthy of being a president. The other thing is that there are only three black colleges in the country mm -hmm. with a Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society, and that is the most prestigious honor society comprising all academic disciplines. Mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee State is one. When I was president of Jackson State, that's mm -hmm. another. And then uh, uh, North Carolina A&T. Only three black colleges with the most prestigious honor society. Mm -hmm. And that says something about what we believe in quality and excellence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's something that I can say about TSU. The academic side is there. And the building part is I've built eight new buildings since I've been at TSU. I've renovated every building on the main and downtown campuses. That is the most beautiful campus I know uh, in the country. And we create that metamorphosis around building and excellence. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you've also uh, made arrangements for that downtown. Why don't you make some statements in reference to that uh, downtown facility? Uh, and what can happen uh, to that uh, facility, uh, Dr. Hill? Well, as a result of the consent decree, uh, which TSU received uh, the bulk of the funds, we are going to uh, renovate the downtown campus. And it will be very, very important for non-traditional students because we find in this society in which we live now, non-traditional students predominate. Mm -hmm. And so TSU will be one of the institutions out there educating non-traditional students. Mm -hmm. So we're going to renovate it. We're going to make that campus what it used to be on the University of Tennessee, Nashville. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you got, you'll have, uh, and of course we're getting ready, uh, Dr. Heffner, for our uh, second commercial break after which we'll come back and we'll have uh, several minutes to uh, deal with uh, some additional topics. But uh, in terms of uh, your uh, building program, in terms of your, the academic achievement, we'd also like for you to say uh, later something about uh, the faculty, because I think right. that uh, you've been very, very important and instrumental in terms of faculty development. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Guest is Dr. James.